Hope that you're having a great Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in to FBM 89.1 KPGT, Watertown, South Dakota. I praise the Lord for you tuning in. I want to know. I want to know. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. What God is doing here at 89.1 The Truth and the TruthFM.com. Take a quick look at your weather forecast. Looks like today. we're the only local Christian station in the state. And, and it looks like about a 20% chance of that. When we bought it, it was just a computer and a tower. You are listening to KPGT 89.1 FM, Watertown, South Dakota. On August 6, 2012, a new broadcast flooded the airwaves over Watertown, South Dakota a frequency dedicated to proclaiming God's truth. He's already done it all. He gave it all. That's good for he, 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 He's loved it all. He, he, he's done everything. He'll never ask you to do anything he hadn't already done. And presenting the gospel message to the lost while encouraging believers in their daily walk with the Lord. I had a lady in town. She stopped by the other day and she said, I just want to thank you. She said, you don't know how many days you've helped me. She never called, never asked for a song, never anything and uh, handed a check to invest in the ministry and never, never been to our church, never been anything. But she says, she says now my, my radio never goes off of that station. She was, the, she was the sheriff of the town. Now back to more good gospel music on 89.1 The Truth. A listener-supported Christian radio station broadcasting traditional hymns, conservative classic Southern gospel music, and some of America's finest King James Bible preaching. The Bible says is to be restored. I had somebody the other day, a, a young boy started coming to our church. He wanted to meet and talk about Bible things. Well, I start giving him Bible answers and he'll start quoting all some other stuff. I'm like, you've never gone to church your whole life. Where you learn this? Well, I listen to Paul Chapel every day on your radio station. You know, his wife says, how, do you, how much you listen to it? Uh, pretty much all day. You know, here's a young believer never been in church in his whole life, you know, and here he is growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord because he listened to a gospel radio station. Brother Whittemore has been blessed with a burden to use this modern means of communication to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ beyond the walls of his church to reach into his community and touch those who find his friendly voice on the radio dial. I went ice fishing with my neighbor the other day. He said, I listened to you on my way to work. And I'm like, you know, I figured he listened to rock and roll station. You know, he's just an old common boy. But for some reason, he knows me, so he feels like I got somebody on the radio, so I tune in on, in the mornings while I'm going to work. And so it's people listening and getting the gospel that never would have gotten it before. And it's been an amazing thing. Brother Whittemore believes that God has much more in store for KBGT. The purchase of this station came with a construction permit to increase the power of its broadcast signal, increasing the coverage area to 10 times larger than the current coverage area. I don't think I'm exaggerating. I think that our radio outreach is the most important radio outreach in the country. Hope that you will tune in next week and be a part of what God's doing here at All Christian Radio. The reason I think it's important is that and I, I don't, once again, I don't exaggerate that I believe it's the most important radio outreach in the country because there is nothing. They're getting something they don't get anywhere else. Until we meet again over the air or in the air, God bless you. Brother Whittemore grew up in upstate South Carolina, where evangelical churches are as common as grocery stores and fast food restaurants. To go to a church, you had to pass up a church to go to it. You know, you chose which church you went to. But in South Dakota, it's not really that way. The majority of churches found in the upper Midwest are liturgical churches like the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church. It's amazing how many of them don't preach the Bible. I sat down with a man just recently and was talking to him. And he asked me, what would be the difference in my religious background and yours? And he was, uh, had to happen to be a Catholic, you know, religion. And so I explained to him a few things and went down, you know, as far as what Baptists may believe. He said, you use the word salvation. What do you mean by that? And I said, you heard John 3, 16, right? And he said, oh, I've seen it on something at a ball game. I mean, going to church all his life, middle-aged person, going to church his whole life, totally committed, and never even heard John 3, 16. There's just no gospel witness.
In May of 2008, Brother Whittemore moved his family from East Tennessee to Watertown, South Dakota to start Harvest Baptist Church. We knocked on every door in our town, um, nearly, you know, 10,000 doors almost. Over and over, people middle-aged and up, they would say, I've never heard that before. I've never heard anybody say that I can know that I'm going to heaven. And that's what it is. They're trusting the church. They're trusting their um, traditions. A family that they have moved out, went and started another church in another area from our area. And her mother still lives in our town and her grandmother. And she had went to visit her grandmother in the nursing home the other day. And she says, and they ask her the question, what are you going to do when you, when you go to heaven? If you go to heaven, how are you going to get there? She said, I'll go to heaven with my church membership in my hand. That's, how, that's where it come to. She said, if God don't let me into heaven, me being a member of that church for all these years, she said, then I don't want to go. That's all they know. Harvest Baptist has grown from meeting in the living room of a member's house to gathering on Sunday mornings at a local event center to finding a home in a traditional church building. I know people that drive 75 miles, not to because I would prefer that church over this, but it's the only church I can find that preaches the Bible. Having the church in a permanent building has presented new opportunities to expand. It's an amazing thing what God has done and, and um, a church in North Carolina gave us a bus so that opened the door to reach children and bus ministry, which is a major part. We probably have, we've been averaging 40 to 50 kids come out on Thursday night for a kids club, you know, and, and so that's, that's a big part of our ministry, reaching that next generation. As well as providing the space to house a studio for the radio station. It is reaching people that wouldn't be reached any other way. I get emails and calls from people that, you know, I had a missionary the other day from Brazil. And imagine that, a little station in South Dakota encouraging a missionary in Brazil. It's really, a, it's a tool to reach them more and uh, make them think. It's amazing to me what it's doing. It's reaching people that never would come to church. If we can be there for them and reach them, you know, they know we care. If you love them, that overcomes it all. It doesn't matter what your accent is. It doesn't matter, you know, what your background is. If you love people, it overcomes. And that's what it really, that's the need for someone to love them, but to love them because Christ loved us. Mm -hmm.